Welcome, everybody. Today on our podcast, we're going to be having Gork today. We're going to be talking about his uh, whole involvement in bicycle motocross. Uh, he's a, a veteran of bicycle motocross. He's been around from the beginning, uh, from probably around 1976, I, I believe. Um, I don't know. I'll be asking him in the interview. Um, but also, um, just want you guys to know that he's done a lot of, about BMX. He's also been a bike rider, a racer. He raced, but he what he didn't shine in racing. He um, basically um, was out there and was very, very um, you know driven to BMX because he just loved it, like me and everybody else that was gravitated towards BMX back in the day in the seventies, early seventies. We we're like uh, emulating basically bicycle motocross was we were trying to emulate the uh, motocross because we were everybody that couldn't afford a dirt bike, they had a BMX bike, and we had Schwinn Stingrays, and then guys way before me like Stu thompson and you know david clinton um just very cool dudes from back in the day you know marvin church and all the great legends of the beginning of uh bmx era that did it before i did it because i started in 1976 myself but um also gork um is like a pioneer in bmx he also was a pioneer of uh freestyle uh, bmx he was a uh, team manager he um found uh talent people that actually did um you know the freestyle bmx competitions and stuff and he found a couple good riders and then he promoted them and he did that and then he also was a distributor um for different um bike companies so he's been in the industry for a long time and um i just wanted to uh make sure i do a podcast with him because he's like a lot of people kind of know who he is but he's been around a lot longer than you think he also today works for USA BMX and works for um, the USA BMX, which used to be called the ABA American Bicycle Association back in my time. But uh, over the over the time and you know evolution, they've changed to the USA BMX. And um, so today we'll be doing a live interview with them um, on Zoom. And um, I hope you guys enjoy this. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. We've got some hot daddies on the line. We certainly do, Scott. Keep an eye on the center of that game. Petition, Pete Longkiewicz, past national champion. Pistol Pete Longkiewicz making the win. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the wacky world of BMX according to the Pistola. Your host, the four-time national number one pro and a world champion. Give it up for Pistol Pete! I'll see you next year in the winner's circle. Welcome. Today we have Gork on the podcast, and um, we welcome Gork. Gork's a old time BMXer from the old school days. He's in the industry still today, and um, we're going to ask him a couple questions and see how everything's going for Gork. Gork works for the USA BMX. He runs the Hall of Fame, and I just uh, happy to to talk to you today, Gork. Thanks for uh, giving me the pleasure to talk to you. So, um, how are you doing today? Are we on? <laughs> yeah, we're on. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. All right. Hey, Gork, um, let's talk about like um, you. A lot of people probably don't know where you're from, but you're from Northern California. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got into BMX and where it all started. Yeah, so grew up in Sacramento, California, and local track was All-American BMX Raceway in uh, Roseville. And uh, that was used to host uh back in the day but yeah just uh all the neighborhood kids and you know we all had paper routes and we all discovered bmx around the same time so that was uh that was my entrance into uh introduction to to this awesome sport and what was the year that'd be uh right around 75 76 like 75 we started getting into it and reading bicycle motocross news very cool all right, Gork. So, um, also then you, know, you started the, getting the into action. the. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I was gonna say, you know, like 
first guy in our neighborhood, you got a 75 square back, you know, that was first real BMX bike, you know, everybody else just was on twin stingrays and, you know, it was a, you know, fun time, you know, everybody on the weekends riding over to the bike shops and, you know, checking out all the the newest, latest BMX products and stuff. Yes. That was an awesome time. I, I, I agree with you. Those were just great times going down to the local bike shop, learning about new things that were coming out and all the innovative parts that we wanted. But our parents were like, Hey, you know, those are kind of expensive. So, uh, it all starts, you know, at the <laughs> grassroots, you know, level, but, um, also you, um, were like one of the first, um, like guys to do the freestyle on the BMX back in what? 83, 84. And, um, you, yeah. Yep. And, and so you had a tour team and stuff like that. And then the rock and roll stuff well, Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, like a lot of kids at that time. And and I always say like, if you're not that great of a racer, then you got into freestyle, <laughs> you know? So that was kind of the story for me, you know, I mean, I was, you know, wasn't the fastest guy. I was, I was quick on the side hack because my brother was pedaling, but you know, as for me racing, I wasn't, getting more into I was the local gate starter out at Prairie City BMX and and a crazy horse BMX and you know wanted to kind of become the next Bob Harrow I guess was my dream you know doing drawings and stuff like that and making custom posters for people so one day I was working at my gas station job and see this dude across the street there was this big old concrete wall and uh over there and shreds this wall pulls off the perfect flatty you know just aerial and then comes back down on the wall and, and it turns out that was john diz hicks so that was you know pretty soon he comes over to my gas station to to buy a soda or something you know and i start talking and find out who he is i i knew his brother from racing but that was kind of the first time i'd really met diz and uh we just kind of hit it off and it's like dude let's let's start our own free how he was uh formed nice nice and then you guys added on that other guy um what was his name the guy with the blonde hair diz what diz hicks or well uh, yeah that was that was diz with the with the d snyder with, replica yeah, hair yeah 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 <laughs> he was one of your guys that popped out of that. i remember the limousine days when you guys pulled up with the limo and you're like the leader of them yeah yeah so i was kind of more you know did the, the superstar of the team you know we had other riders you know first we had uh this guy bob whitney because he he owned a ramp and uh so he was like automatically on the team and then later on we got wobbly bob after uh after bob whitney so we'd always have these uh bobs that were on the team lots of but, bobs you know. huh lots of bobbies <laughs> definitely so how did you guys get um involved with cw with roger warsham So my freestyle team, the Gork Trick team, we had a little newsletter and I'd send it out to everybody in the industry. And I was always trying to, like I said, I was kind of more of the promoter and, uh, you know, announcer of all the shows and stuff like that. And I was just sent the newsletter out to, you know, it was like a little uh, zine, you know, legal size, you know, single page zine that I do, you know, just talking Team and we're upcoming shows or summer tours or whatever you know kind of made us sound a lot bigger than what we were really were probably but uh it worked you know so yeah great marketing <laughs> we, uh, i mean you're you're always in the you know the thick of things i remember you from the beginning doing all that great stuff for bmx and like you said guys that weren't so good at racing started to go into the you know freestyle and make a name for themselves and um it was a really great time for especially the manufacturers because they're able to make more money off their little freestyle then off of BMX racing for a little bit. It was um it was an incredible time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the CW deal, I mean, we kind of had a Diz had a thing going with Mongoose through Rusakawa. You know, we just got a free frame from Mongoose, but they didn't really didn't have a freestyle bike. And then uh when CW was coming out with their freestyle bike, you know, I just got in touch with Mark Soraya. And you know, I'm sure you remember Mark. Yes, yeah, yeah. He was my team manager for a little bit also. Probably. Yep, great yeah, guy. Yeah, so Mark was, 
Yeah. Yeah. Mark was awesome. And so he, you know, they're starting, you know, come out with the California freestyler by CW and, you know, they, it was actually, we started talking to him before they picked up Mike Buff. And then by the time the deal came to be, it was like all of a sudden, you know, Mike Buff's on the team as well. And, you know, which was perfect. Right. Right. So um, is, and eventually they'd pick up, they pick up Seppi and, you know, they, they had the full deal, you know? Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, it was a great time because everybody had their own little clicks like Hutch racing and everybody had their own little freestyle gig, like with Woody Edson and everybody else from all these other, you know, teams. And it was yeah. very competitive. And now the USA BMX is involved into that kind of thing where they're putting on events, which is, is a great thing for, for the sport of BMX. Cause at this moment, you know, BMX is, you know, huge. I mean, lots of motos. I'm back out there racing, having a great time. Uh, it's a whole new, you know, time. And also, um, a lot of people don't know, you know, these days that you're like one of the major journalists you used to interview me all the time, prying out, you know, information from <laughs> me and stuff like that. And you're really good yeah. at it. And, uh, you'd create all this stuff where now it's on social media. It's, it's totally different. Um, why don't you tell us a bit, a bit about what year and when you started working for one of the most, you know, iconic bicycle, bicycle magazines, you know, BMX action. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, on my 21st birthday, I made the big move down to Southern California and took me a few weeks or so, but eventually I got, I got the job actually through Mark Soraya and I started working at CW. So I worked at CW for maybe six months or so until I got this call from Oz and, you know, the magazine. So they were looking for a replacement and, uh, you know, my name had come up because I had done all these zines and, you know, like I said, I sent them out to everybody in the industry. So, you know, there were everybody. And we had also done an article on Freestyle Magazine with the Gork Trick team. So anyways, my name came up and I was down, I was living there in Southern California. So it was a good opportunity. And, you know, it's like for BMX, so that was pretty, uh, pretty amazing, you know, that, uh, you know, had that opportunity to uh, go work for BMXA. So that was, uh, that was an 80, right towards the end of 85, I believe, or, or the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was about yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe so. And then in 86, you were already like a veteran. You know what I mean? I remember you learn really yeah, fast. Yeah. You learn really fast. You know, you're really good at what you do. And uh, that's why you're, today, you're used, still, we... yeah, that's why you're still in BMX today. And you're, um, you know, you compliment anybody you're around, like, especially like people don't understand that. Didn't you work for Redline at one, at one time? Yeah. Yeah. So after I worked for BMX action, almost five years, and then I worked for ABA all through the nineties. So from 89 to 99, that was, uh, my time at ABA. Nice. nice. That opportunity popped up to work at Redline as marketing, as the marketing manager, marketing director. So I went up to move to Seattle and worked for Redline for, uh, 11 years and had some, that, and that was a really awesome opportunity as well, you know, just to learn the industry, the BMX, the whole bicycle industry, kind of from a different angle, you know, a different perspective. Yeah, what a blessing, man. You've been all over from from ground from the ground up all the way to the top. I mean, like, um, if anybody knows a lot about BMX, it's you. And um, also, uh, how about now you're working for the USA BMX and how long have you been working for, you know, the USA BMX? And it's crazy. It's been another 11 years. So <laughs> dang, man, we're getting old, dude. I've been times flying, but you know, you're still yeah. kicking butt out there. I'm really impressed with all that. And, um, you know, I'm gonna have to get into the hall of fame. Cause I was so busy at the grands. I never even had time to go check it out. I'm going to definitely check it out this next year when I come for the grands. Um, but also, I, know, so I, know. I, was, I was really, I was bummed that you didn't make it by and uh, check out the museum. Yeah, well, you know, I had some kind of ups and downs with with some of my um, accommodations kind of went like south at the end. So I like, you know, remember we were talking at like three in the morning, somebody lost yeah. their telephone and somehow they're like <laughs> fall into your hands at 3 a.m. at, you know, the night after all the grands on Sunday, more Sunday early. It was actually Monday. You called me at 3 a.m. and uh, 
this guy left the telephones inside this guy's truck, but, um, we retrieved him, got the oh, guy. Yeah. yeah. It was, a, I was tripping out because when my phone was ringing, I was trying to just relax before I go to the airport in another hour. And, um, it was you. And I was like, what is Gork? Something happened. And I, so I have to pick up the phone cause you're a journalist. So I'm like, what's up? And you're like, this guy over here, he's trying to get in touch with you. And I was like, Oh, sorry, Gork, you know? But uh, we were luckily, yeah, we were a, able to help that guy. But it was a trip because I was like, you know, it was the end of the weekend. And you know how it is. People don't really realize how much you guys put into this stuff. You and Shannon Gillette and everybody else out there, you know, every weekend yeah. doing it, you know. And it's like, without you guys, you know, there's no direction in that, you know, in that, in all that stuff that you guys do that, you know, everybody takes advantage of that they don't really know that you're doing all these cool things behind, you know behind the doors and uh sometimes you don't get you know all the credit that that's needed that's why i want to you know definitely interview in any ways you know like to talk to you a little bit because you know like i said before um i always looked up to you as like you know this promoter guy that's like a you know politician of bmx basically because you've done everything <laughs> in bmx and you've always been a good guy and you know like you know a lot of other people they you know they're who they are and that's that's what's cool about bmx is like it's a family sport and um you know it just brings people together and now it's just like you know basically um you know things are just going great you know like as far as for you guys i mean with all the social media and you have all the people you know talking about you know all these new products that are coming out that are available i mean guys like you know toby henderson from box and all these guys that are still from the old school it's great to see those guys out there still being involved in it and another guy is harry larry yeah. which the turbo is still out there fucking pedaling around the track it's pretty amazing at, at his age at 64 <laughs> years old it's like i'll definitely be retired from bmx i mean as far as like pedaling around the track because like every year it gets a little bit harder because everybody's getting faster it's amazing because you'd think you know back in the day you know 56 year olds are pedaling around the track it's kind of funny but uh we're doing it and it's and i'm having a great time with it you know we're not doing it for money we're doing it because we like to do it and um it's a, it's a great time in the sport and what do you think yeah. about that gork scene like the old guys like us out there what do you think about that i know isn't it weird you know because you think like back in our you know in the 80s 90s you know we were you know you kind of looked at these old guys that were racing you know all the old cruiser guys you know the the guy who was it uh i don't know just you know like uh uh Alan apple and and ev rosecrans you know all those guys you know the old dudes that were racing right. and it's dude that's us now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah 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 um, that's all it is you know i i even talked to everett about it you know like um that you know they keep on having to up the thing because people are living so long that pretty soon they're gonna have like 70 expert you know with harry know, out yeah. there. and uh yeah. it's amazing though I, I mean it's great it's not like there's a lot of these guys because you know it's not like the old days because the tracks are are a little bit you know i'd say safer because there's more jumps in between so you're not going as fast or you don't not catch an air you basically are riding on the on the ground basically and if you're advanced then you're you're probably catching a little air but like in our class, we're mostly, you know, staying on the ground, you know, um, but I'm having fun doing it. And um, so Gork, are you going to come back and race or what? You know, I, I've always. Once a year in Tulsa, and uh, I have this awesome track, you know, an arena right outside my office. <laughs> so I'm I'm hoping to race a lot more this year. You know, that's kind of like my goal this year is uh nice. You know, I've got my got my supercross 26 inch that I really like riding on. You know, I've I've hit the track a couple times, but you know, it's been a little bit cold here. So waiting for it to warm up. It's gonna be nice this Thursday. Yeah, man. Just be safe out there. But um I can see you ride, stadium and I can see you riding that track because it's a beautiful track. I, I gotta check it out. But um you're very blessed to have a track like that. I know, like you said, you're looking at it every day. So you got to take a couple laps here pretty soon and uh, yeah. see how you do. Have a good time. You know, it's, 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 it's fun. It's um, uh, BMX is a fun sport. And now that, you know, with social media, you can reach out to a lot of people all over the world. They can actually watch the races from wherever they are. And uh, I think it's great. And, um, but also how about your, um, let's talk about the, uh, 
you know, your museum that you put together and how many months did it take you to guys to put that together? And, um, how's that thing going? Yeah, it's, it's going good, man. We have, a uh, you know, visitors coming every week, you know, you know, not massive numbers yet, but you know, just, just onesies, twosies, five or six people, you know, uh, coming by. You know, it, you know, the word's getting out and uh, it's kind of cool. You know, a lot of the people are from out of town that are coming to visit. So that's kind of neat. You know, they're in town, they're in Tulsa on business or, or on vacation. And, you know, so everybody's stopping by. And then like last week, we had a school bus tour come through a uh, high school. They uh, it was kind of neat. It was a Tulsa high school that it's kind of like a shop class, but it's called Bike Club. And so they. learn about and uh their instructor really cool guy he's really into cycling and he got this bike club going and it's basically a shop class but they're instead of working on cars they're working on bicycles you know and they start off bmx bikes and so anyways they they brought the whole class came and did the tour of the of the museum kind of educated them a little bit on the museum and then we uh took them out to the track and got them set up on bikes and bmx tool it was, it was pretty neat so hope to see a lot more of that in the future very very cool man it's 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 very cool that you, what you put together it's amazing i see it online and it's just like to, to see all those parts and stuff it brings back a lot of memories it brings back a lot of times you know when we were doing all kinds of different things and we're in different times of our lives we're just uh little kids because some of us grew up on it you know i myself started riding bmx about 10 years old and um i came from motocross uh, background before that and, um, just started doing it. And then there was a lot of support, you know, during our, our time. And so that's what really like made me gravitate towards riding BMX more than motorcycles. Cause it was like working my parents, you know, bank account. Cause those, everything was expensive when you run anything with gas or oil, you know, becomes a, a yeah. very expensive sport. So, um, I excelled well at it. So I, I started liking it and, um, had a great time. And, Ever since I was a BMXer, you know, and that's yeah, that's the beauty of a, that's yeah. a great thing about BMX, man. Yeah, yeah, most but yeah, you're asking, you're, at, you're asking about how it how it started or how much time it took to do it. So back actually, right before I left to go to Redline, BA had just been hired. You know, he was fresh out of college, and and BA Anderson, you know, his dad Bernie owns you know ABA, so BA was just hired and kind of. ABA, his vision, you know, even back then, just fresh out of college was like to have this ultimate facility with a, with a indoor or a covered arena track and in the, the office building right next to it. So we, uh, we used to talk about it all the time because actually we used to room at uh, the nationals when we travel, he, we'd always room together. So we were always throwing around ideas about how awesome this facility. And so that, you know, so this is, it was, that was 25 years ago that we were talking about it. And I did a, there's an old drawing that I did in 98 or 99. And it's pretty similar to what we have now in Tulsa at the Hardesty, you know, BMX stadium. And yeah, uh, that's our, amazing. Yeah, I never got to go to the one over in Chula Vista in San Diego. Um, but that's probably where you guys started to set up that whole drawing, right? The drawing of the museum when Chula, you know with the olympic track the beijing replica track and they had the little little room it was uh originally just a little uh movie room where tourists that came through the olympic training center they could go into the room and and watch a watch a film about olympic history or whatever so it wasn't getting used that much so that's what they uh, provided aba or you know You know called but that's you know that was the the first like permanent room that they'd had you know to have actually have in a museum and uh and even though i was working at redline at the time shannon shannon gillette calls me and goes hey we're we're setting up the museum at the olympic training center you know do you want to come and help and i was like heck yeah you know because a lot of you know i'd always done the museums at the uh at the grands all through the night So uh, at 
at the ABA offices, but you know, we just didn't have a place for it until uh until Chula Vista. And then once Chula Vista closed, then we just been storing it in the warehouse, knowing that eventually this place in Tulsa is gonna be built. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. I think I'm I'm very impressed by that because that takes a lot of, you know, a lot of ability, a lot of, you know, um, know how and and knowledge to do all that. Cause you know, we do have some, you know, people that have a lot of knowledge in BMX and you know, it's like, that's why we have all this information because we share with each other. Uh, it's a great thing. Like we were talking about the family sport BMX. Um, but also, um, those, all those things and all those are, is there going to be more like old school events at, at Hardesty? Yeah, actually. Uh, so this year at the, uh, it's October 6th, 7th and 8th is going to be the hall of fame. The first we'll have the vintage nationals. Day eight, we'll have a reception for the hall at the Hall of Fame at the museum, like we did last year. And then uh, Saturday, we'll kick off in the morning with the Vintage Nationals, and then we'll also have a vintage, you know, an old school bike show and and swap meet. And then that evening will be the Hall of Fame ceremony. And then on Sunday, we want to do a bunch of well extracurricular activities, you know. or a pun or whatever you know that's uh, still yet to be decided and it's still in the works but you know they'll do something on sunday as well so it'll be three three days of just full-on bmx you know old schoolness yeah it'll dude be- that's totally amazing i'm gonna have to catch one of those one day and come there live and and, and do a podcast with you guys on a live situation um yeah I mean, most definitely yeah. man i'm very impressed by all this stuff and um just the whole evolution of bmx has just been amazing just coming back learn how to ride it. You know, it's like, it's like I'm a beginner again. I mean, I have all this experience, but I'm out there like trying to figure out how to ride these new tracks. And, and I get to see all my old friends like you and everybody else, you know, it's, it's just a, it's amazing sport, you know, um, with all that stuff, you know, with, and, and how are you acclimating so much from Washington to Oklahoma? How was that? How are you, how are you enjoying that, that change? Yeah. Well, I mean, Washington, Kind of a similar bit, you know, it's way different than Arizona. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because you went from Washington, Arizona, and then to Oklahoma. So you're kind of like getting closer to Oklahoma. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, you went NorCal, SoCal, Arizona, Seattle, Arizona, back to Arizona, and then over to Oklahoma now. So, yep, all the BMX, so. you know, capitals, basically, you know, the best yeah. places for BMX where BMX exists. You know what I mean? Since the beginning of time, basically, it's just a, it's just an awesome thing. And, um, but anyways, uh, so, so Gork, um, I just think it's really cool. Are you going to be, um, are you responsible? Also, I wanted to ask you one more question was, um, you know, at the grands, I was impressed about the history. Are you the one that does all that? You know how they had it on the side of that, that, um, gate stuff. And it shows like each year has photos and then has information what, what went down, um, I was like, that was a whole night, a museum by itself. I was like, it was very, yeah. very cool. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, we and I was bummed. We have a nag history as well. We had those banners a couple of years ago, and then they got lost. And, you know, by the time we couldn't find them, then it was too late to make new ones. But next year, I'm going to have uh, the nag history banners out there again. And and that's really cool, you know, to see just all the nag nag number one champion. Yeah, there's a lot of great champions, man. I'm impressed by the women. Uh, 1988. Gotta, I, yeah, I mean, like today, Gork, like when I was watching the Grands, you know, seeing like, uh, you know, Willoughby or, uh, not, or, you know, I was seeing Elisa, Elisa and she was just out there just kicking, kicking butt and like riding like, you know, like insane I was just like, man, the, the women have gone to a whole nother level. It's very impressed. I'm very impressed by women's, you know, BMX today. They're just like, oh man, yeah. I got to like, you know, take my hat off to them because they're listening. Impressive. It is. Yes. It's not like it used to be, like you said, you know, like even like Gork, like back in the day, you know, like you said, when Everett Rosecrans, imagine Everett racing against, you know, like Terry Tanet or pistol pete or air <laughs> group or sweets or whoever these new guys you know out there that are like yeah you know people are doing it still having a great time and um but other than that you know it's just like 
like uh another thing oh yeah one more thing about you and how how are you like working with shannon you know like gillette do you work much with him because you're like guys are far apart he's from arizona and you're over there is it like yeah well yeah i still stay in touch a lot with shannon and uh when i was and back in arizona we we're really close because his office is right next door to my old office so uh you know he was always coming over and chit-chatting and all that and you know staying up to touch it yeah very cool man it's it's always good you to know, see all the same man. guys out there like you said you know it's amazing yeah yeah but you know it's also also it's like man the industry you know it's over the next 10 years probably you're going to see this huge change because you know aba has all these employees that have been here for you know 25 30 years working for the company and you know we're all getting up there in the 60s to uh retirement is yep is right around the corner you're so not going to be retire. interesting to see yeah, exactly. It's going to be very interesting because <laughs> like, you know, you'll see people like Clayton, you know, we get the, luckily we get to still see him out there. You know, he's in Arizona. If you're, if you're out in Arizona, you, you get lucky, you get to see Clayton, you know, Clayton John, you know, which is, he put a lot yeah. of work into the, into the BMX. A lot of people don't know about him because, you know, it's all modern now and they don't know about the past. And, um, you know, it's just like one of those things, like that's another thing you put the history there. I think the kids need to do a little bit more, you know, find out who Stu Thompson is. You know what I mean? Cause like, I think what happens is people, the, the older we get, the more they forget. It's not like, you know, like, like uh, football, they, for some reason they remember and probably because, you know, they have these trading cards that are worth millions of dollars, but uh, yeah. you know, BMX isn't like that. It's a, it's just a hardcore sport, you know, like BMXers know who BMXers are. It's like another sport that I'm in is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, And it's the same thing. It's like just a specific amount of people are involved in this sport. It's not like it's worldwide, but it's kind of a mainstream thing. It's not everybody does it because there's so many things you can do out there these days, you know? And uh, so, so Gork, what do you think about the women, the women's BMX? I want to ask you, you know, cause I gave you my perspective of it that I, I'm very impressed, but I want to see what you think. Oh yeah. Yeah. They've, uh, they've definitely stepped it up. Like I was going to say, At first, now MX racing was going to be in the Olympics, and uh, and that was you know for men and women. And I totally remember, you know, I'll admit my my first thoughts were like, oh, they're going to have to have two tracks, you know, because you know a men's track could be much harder than the women's track, you know. And I was I was you know, I don't know, call me the stereotypical, uh, you know, or male chauvinist or whatever, but you know, <laughs> and, I, and I have been. uh and it's been awesome to watch you know the women have totally stepped it up i mean like so much have come so far you know since the 2008 olympics and, and a couple of years prior to that you know there was you know back in the early days sherry elliott was the only one that really was like the most radical jumper and racing and beating the boys and stuff like that and uh you know the girls are actually racing against all the novices and intermediates and, and whooping up on them and and you got the women that are just you know their skill the skill level and obviously definitely pushed by you know at least post willoughby you know she uh she took it to a whole new level right before her it was kim hayashi who was riding for redline you know i was just watching an old old footage from the grands and it was a uh, And at least right on her tail and, and at least I guess always looked up to Kim Hayashi. So, so when that opportunity came, when Kim Hayashi is about to retire and I'm like, all right, who's going to be re her replacement. It was, you know, an obvious choice was to pick up the lease for, for Redline. And, uh, and at that time, you know, she'd, uh, you know, she'd already won a couple of her number one titles in her rookie years, but to help at least you know to support her and uh and to see what she's become now you know just the most dominant woman in all of bmx history yeah I'm, you know? i mean i'm i'm amazed I, I mean that's why like like you said i didn't really think about you know them riding the same track or whatever i really didn't think about that because always they had like a detour for other you know skill abilities 
So like, like you said, it's just, it's amazing that when they come around the track like that and can hit all the jumps, just like the guys and they have the awesome technique and the strength, it's i uh, I'm very like impressed. So shout out to all the women BMXers out there, you know, cause like they don't get enough credit, um, but credits do because they're, they're, they're badasses. They're kicking butt. And, um, yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. So, so anyways, Gork, thank you for, um, for sitting here and talking to me, you know, and, uh, letting everybody know a little bit about what you do and, um, you know, give everybody a little information and give you a little credit because, you know, credits due for you also because Gork's the man when it comes to like knowledge and BMX, he's been out there, he's done it all. You know, he's been in the industry selling bikes, having, finding the best, uh, riders out there, putting them together and, and get involved in, you know, BMX and helping kids and help it grow, you know, the BMX, the sport is just incredible. And, uh, I'd like to just like say thank you and uh we'll see you out at the track soon. Um I'll be at your uh at your work one of these days soon. And you take care. Yeah, in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm gonna try and make it there. And uh thank you and um you have a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon, Gork. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Pistol. All thank right. you. Take care.